Hello, I'm District 4 Councilman Ron Bowen and welcome to another edition of PSL Living, your chance to meet people and go to places that you don't know exist in Port St. Lucie. And today we're going to talk about art. Not bank art, not institutional art, but other forms of art in Port St. Lucie or the lack of art in Port St. Lucie. And with me today are two specialists, two national artists. We have Debbie Krause. Debbie is a uh, digital artist. We also have with us Cheryl Baglioli. Baglioli, excuse me, Cheryl. She's a mixed media artist, both nationally known, but both residents of the Treasure Coast. And uh, they met a couple weeks ago with uh, Daniel Holbrook, our assistant mm -hmm. city manager, who tried to organize the art community. And to my surprise, I attended it. And to my surprise, there are a great number of artists in Port St. Lucie. And there's a problem that they have. And you're here to share some of the problems that the art community has in Port St. Lucie spaces to paint and things of that nature. So please expound on. And what, what your thoughts were about the, first of all, the art gathering we had two weeks ago and the turnout from the artist. Well, we were super excited about 40, maybe 45 artists came out and I think there was a common thread. Many of the people in the community don't realize that artists are making art in their homes. Some have small studios, but they all generally would like a central location to make their art and to have the camaraderie between the artists and the community. So we were very excited about their response to um, our ideas of sharing art in public places, including boosting economic development and tying in the citizens' love for art and the opportunities to see various and um, unusual projects that we have on the table for this year. Were you surprised, Cheryl, or are you surprised by the number of artists in Port St. Lucie and their creativity? I mean, I was taken aback, uh, back by, again, you know, to, to most people, painting is painting by numbers, or I call it institutional art, or, <laughs> you know, something that has no wow factor, but some of the stuff that was brought to the to the, uh, to the, the lecture or the mm -hmm. session was some very creative art, and we had pictures of it, and I was surprised. Are, are you surprised, or you've known all along about the art community? I, I wasn't. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I wasn't really surprised. I know that the Treasure Coast has some of the best artists in the world. We have art, like you said, it's not just you're saying institutional art, paint by numbers, art that you see on banks. And we have artists that because of the community that we are that come from all over the world and all over the United States and they've now relocated to this area and so we have artists that do everything from digital art to graffiti art to poetry art um, mixed media art fine arts you name it we have some fabulous artists in this area but they don't have a chance to show off their skills or show off the art that they have we don't have a lot of places to display our art we don't have a lot of places to sell our art. We don't have a lot of places to share our art and teach others our art either. Um, I, I'm fortunate enough, I travel all over the country and uh, into Canada now teaching mixed media art at different events, different stores, scrapbook stores, local art stores, art studios. and. It's, it's something that these communities desire, and, and I don't have a lot of place here to teach, and neither does some of the artists that I know who would, who would love to be teaching art and sharing that with others. Our school systems are taking art out of the school, so our, our students, have, they don't have a place to express their art. They don't, have a, they don't have a place to go just take a little field trip downtown and see art in a gallery either. So I would love for us to be able to find a place to display and share and share with everybody from little kids to our elderly and our entire community and bring it all together. You mentioned pop art, I think, Debbie, before. Yeah. Uh, and, and Cheryl, you hit on something uh, very important. And, uh, again, it's exposing uh, children to the arts and culture. I think I shared with both of you before we went on the air that coming from Cleveland, Ohio, most people say Cleveland, Ohio, it does have a world-renowned art museum and a world-renowned symphony. And by the time you're six or seven, I don't care what school you go to in the Cleveland area, you've gone to the symphony, you've gone to the art gallery, you've been exposed so, to the arts and yes. culture. I think you hit it right on the head, too. A lot of people come from large 
large metropolitan areas, Washington, Boston, uh, New York, Philadelphia, yeah. where there are big museums and, and a lot of art and culture, Debbie, and and down here, uh, we really have we been like Pee Wee Herman, so right. to speak, of the art community. And one more thing, as a city council, I'm very frustrated because we have two communities, one to the north of us and one to the south of us, very small but very artsy and very the art community's flourishing there. So I'd like to know from you ladies, any ideas, uh, any plans, anything that the city can do? Uh, if you were king or, or queens for the day, what, 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 what do we need? Well, what we, we have need? a group of artists that w did work downtown and we were had a very successful gallery there that did feel like Soho or South Beach. And unfortunately, um, real estate was a problem for us. And so now what we'd like to do, we call ourselves Art Projects, and it is a group of artists that all want to be able to show in different places. So our wish list would be a facility or a a, a structure where we could show art during the season so that our northern residents and our local residents would have um, access to some incredibly curated shows, international artists, national themed shows. We would like a place to have that art shown. For many years, people said, um, jokingly artists were starving starving artists you always heard that and we don't hear starving doctors and lawyers and so maybe it's because they don't have the opportunity to be able to display their art but we would like for them to have the opportunity to show their art and perhaps sell some art during mm -hmm. season and so we're very interested in doing some pop-ups we'd like to do them throughout all of the districts and a one-night event where magically the brown paper comes off the windows the people arrive they see the art when the place closes the next morning you can see no signs it was there little points of interest that is intriguing it gets people excited about art and they get to see an array we have people that make art from treasures they call it junk to them second generation art one of our friends janet bird fuller fabulous artist we have watercolor artists we have oil painters mm -hmm. You have not seen their work here in this city. Let's bring that group of the in the Treasure Coast of artists that want to work on these projects, marry them to the community with the city's help, and get art in not only public places, but in places in neighborhoods and communities that can be proud of maybe perhaps having the residents work on it with us and you know give them a taste of what they're missing. All right. Sure, I think you were sharing with me before we, we started taping today that you have traveled quite a bit around the world and a lot of arts mixed and married in with, with music and food. Can you kind of expound on that, how different areas or different regions blend art with different I activities? think you're finding this marriage of art with, with all types of aspects. You find people that are doing shows where they're bringing in and they're showing, they're doing art shows and they're doing dance at the same time or they're reading poetry, they're playing music. Think about any type of art event that you've ever been to. Usually there's some kind of music playing in the background. So they just work really well together. Um, one of the things that I specialize in is the fact that I'm a mixed media artist, but I'm also a professional designer in the craft and hobby industry. So I'm working, I'm bridging that gap between what some people just call crafters and what some people call artist, fine artist, because you find that everybody's wanting to really expand on that. and and do things together. So your your fine artists are kind of getting bored of just doing one thing all the time. So they're wanting to explore some other mediums. And your your crafters or your stay-at-home moms and everything else, they're wanting to explore that creativity as well. It's they're wanting to do social art. Um, you you know we had back in the day we had quilting bees and things like that. And now you see a lot of social art activities that are being available. You see paint and sip brush and brew, different things like that. And poor St. Lucie doesn't have those things happening, so. 
What is needed? Is there something needed by the city administration, the city council, the, the citizens of the, of the community? How do how do we kickstart this thing? Or you and both of you have done a nice job of, of promoting art in the community. I've worked with both of you before. I've seen your works and and the, and, and the limited shows we've had here in the community center. Uh, is there anything we can do? In, city can do or, or the council can do that can help absolutely just generate and not necessarily monetarily but just help you get the word out is there something uh, well this uh, is a great start just by offering us the opportunity to share a little bit about art in our community so this is a really great start opening up the meeting that you had for us with the city council and stuff um, that's a great way we had a lot of artists in the community who came and expressed an interest so we're talking about possible building locations a place to show our art so maybe some of the civic centers the community centers that we have here that have blank empty walls well, let's at talk this about moment. That. I am so <laughs> glad you mentioned that because Debbie, uh, God bless you, you, you brought brought me photos of our beautiful Civic Center and it's rented just every weekend with weddings and concerts mm -hmm. and it is a great place but the walls are all white wa whitewashed basically. There is uh, some art in the, in the Civic Center to, uh, in, the in, back, the in the back, in the back in the gallery there but uh, the walls up and down the halls are all of, of void of any type of art or any, any kind of decora decorations. Well, it's such a fabulous facility, number one, and there's so many people that pass through the doors that it's a good location for um, people to be able to, maybe they're going to the gym and they see a piece of art and they're like, what's this, you know? And they go in and they start exploring. And I happened to go in there to kind of see what space might be available to visit the gallery. And I noticed that the walls are bare. And we have so many artists that have tons of art, <laughs> literally. We're storing art like you can't believe. I mean, uh, it's an amazing number of pieces we have ready to hang. So when I walked in there, I took some photos. I think it would be amazing, the ballroom area, people passing in and out of there. It just gives them a chance to see art and the hope that you know our local artists will get some recognition and we can start making this come further up the ladder of importance, not only for the artists, but for the residents and for economic development. I was fortunate enough to um, be one of 400 artists in Lake City's art fields two years ago. And they have tried um, to bring art, music, and dance to the children and residents as it was old tobacco country and they want them to move along in art and they've started holding a festival 10-day festival that has brought money to restaurants hotels all the local businesses they're delighted it has helped lake city so much it's an amazing project and because we think big we would like to see eventually the city or the county or residents and local artists host an event like that that will become an annual thing where 10, 15, 20,000 people visit. It needs to be a destination known for art. And that's a good way to marry yeah. art and our interest and our, our love of it with helping the entire community. Well, if you get it started, put me on your list and I will volunteer and really, I understand what you're talking about. I see some of these bluegrass jamborees. Amazing. Uh, art shows, just uh, yeah, boat shows. Uh, just, just if you have special mm -hmm. interest, special shows, you'll draw a crowd from out of the area. And again, the economic development and the impact is it incredible. Helps, it helps so right. much. You mentioned the, the, the uh, blank walls and halls uh, in, the, in the Civic Center. Let's talk about one other government building that we've been working on. Uh, and that is the five bay storage area the city has right now and for people that don't know where it's at it's basically behind the bells outlet in the civic center or city center project and right now it's storing uh, generators uh, backup generators in case uh, of a hurricane and I believe the city administratively right now is looking for a place to store those generators safely and try to take the five bays and I believe there used to be an oil change place there's a, a lift or something there is very creative and try to uh, look and turning that into maybe a 
possibly uh, with uh, the right approval, a community art gallery, mm -hmm. uh, where somebody who moving into the area doesn't have a place to paint or practice could come, or again, people like yourself could uh, show your works or have a coffee house situation. What are your thoughts on that, or what would you do with those five bays if you were in charge or had had again if you were queens for the day? What would you do with those five bays that are not being used right now? Well, I think definitely it with some visual painting and the uniqueness of the building, it would certainly get some attention. We would like to see, um, we thought about the oil change area and maybe even make it like a black box with a TV monitor and show all local artists work nonstop on it where someone could go down, get a peek of it all. We, we talked about a, a friend of ours who's a, an absolutely amazing artist. Her husband is looking to do a small cafe. We thought what one of that area could be someplace where you could get a, a cup of coffee or something in a cafe, see some actual art in a gallery, and then an open workspace where artists could be working um, either inside, outside, um, to show their crafts and get the public in to see what we do. We have some I'm sorry, Cheryl. Uh, we have some input before the show where some people actually come and watch artists paint, and it's very informative for them. Uh, we had uh, Ed Cunningham come in, our director of communications, talk to talk to you about that. So I didn't yeah, mean to interrupt you, but people, it seems like there's a lot yeah. of advantages and just some so many options in art. People love to watch art happening. I mean, people love to come in and see a finished piece, but they always wonder how did that evolve to be this finished piece they're looking at. So they're fascinated when they see it actually happening in the process. So a place that we could create art and people can come and see art being created at the same time would be a fabulous use of that space. Another thing I'd like to see happen is to create a community art center so that um, businesses and individuals could donate supplies, finances, whatever, so that we could have a fully stocked art center that has arts and and crafts in it and people can come anytime that it's open and just be able to create with the supplies that are on hand. I would love to see something like that in our city. I know other places where that's happening and it's a huge success and it's giving kids who have nothing else to do in the community an outlet to come and be creative and express themselves in a safe environment. I did not realize until you mentioned they stopped teaching art and then There's some basic art in some of the schools. In quite a few of the schools they're taking out art, music, Music, sports, different things because those are extracurricular activity budgets, things, um, and and unfortunately, art is one of them that usually is the first to go because it's not considered a necessity. Where many of us feel like art is a necessity in so many ways because it gives you the chance to to experience everything about life as far as that to express yourself creatively creativity to see art in process it's um, social economic like you said I'd like There's to see a mobile unit that'd be fun a mobile art gallery a, a panel truck perhaps someone has one somewhere we could load art up every week and we could visit some schools some senior citizen retirement centers um, a public's parking lot where people could just wander in and see something. The more they see, the more they appreciate. The other thing that we used to do at our gallery, we'd have an opening and there was a food truck invasion that was married to it. People love to go to food trucks and wander in areas that there's something to do. I would like to see eventually that marriage come in, also with a dance troupe or someone, um, local musicians, and marry all of that because it's that feel of different things to do, great food, different arts, music. People like that. They want to spend their leisure time in all of those areas. A happy, so, so to speak. Exactly. And I exactly. Think, I think assistant manager Daniel Holbrook has, has met with the uh, yes. food truck people, and uh, we're very excited we're start, about we're that. We're going to start a, a pilot program February first with the food truck invasion okay. here on a weekly basis, on a daily basis here every week, and that's for probably another show and a, a different, uh, some additional information. But uh, I want to get your final thoughts on, on 
art in general, but uh, real quickly, if you ask the average person I have about art in St. Lucie County, and, and to our credit, we have the Bacchus Gallery. I'm a member of the Bacchus Gallery. I love his work. And you have the Highwaymen. Uh, we had him here at the first lunch fest that I helped to organize and co-founded. First lunch fest, we had the Highwaymen here too. But to me, art in St. Lucie County is more than the Highwaymen and the Bacchus Gallery. I think Absolutely. it's artists like yourself, and I want to help promote it. Is there any way that the public can get involved and, and, and promote the art and, and the arts and get together with the artists and, and, and spark plugs like yourself in the art community? I think uh, you nailed it. Um, it's not, because you asked a few minutes ago what the city could do. We've listed some things the city could do, some of the things that community could do. It doesn't just have to be art displayed in a city center. It could be restaurants and businesses who have empty walls who are looking to show art. Very good idea. Um, and then any artist who want to be involved, we do have, we have an organization now called Art Projects. So we have a Facebook page called Art Projects. You can come and find us there and leave a message, information, let us know how you would like to get involved and how you could either, whether you want to display art, do you want to help organize art? I mean, we could talk about all these things we'd love to see happen, but it can't be just you know a small handful of us that are doing it. It needs to be the entire community coming together to support it to make this happen. Okay, we have a community of 174,000 people. If we just get 1% involved in the arts and culture, I think we would have a great, I a think so. great start right there. It would. And I can't thank you, Debbie and Cheryl, for being here on TV20. Thank you for having us. Thank PSL you so Living, much. And there will be some contact information after the show. Great. And we will be right back right after these important messages.